for example, the most recent one that they actually recognize as miraculous would be Sister uh, uh, Bernadette Moreau. And I have a buddy who works with, like, on miracles. His name is Caleb Jackson. He's working on a two-volume work. And if you look at this case of Sister Bernadette Moreau, if you want some of the sources, um, I can try and get them for you. But she was um, viewed by over 300 different independent doctors about her miracle claim, and they could not find a naturalistic cause, but it's built around religious significance. Where I think it was after prayer or something like that. Right, for clarity, uh, are you like, saying, like, the epistemic inability to actually access or like feasibly determine the natural causes extinct or like precludes the possibility that there's still natural explanation well all i'm saying is that we have to go by well there's a couple problems if we're going to defy a miracle like if a miracle actually happens in the world we're not going to be able to find like a supernatural mechanism it's going to be inference to the best explanation so this is why for example when you have particular cases of somebody having something that we know of nothing else in the medical literature to indicate so take the case of gastrophoresis um, which is severe gastrophoresis we have no examples of severe gastrophoresis in one of the case studies um, where it absolutely all of the symptoms that happen spontaneously disappear like at once um, what we do have is maybe like some psychosomatic reasons that people could have or they will slowly disappear over a long period of time so there's only one case that we have where the person is completely healed instantaneously after um, being prayed for. So we have a case of that. Um, we have like the case, for example, of the girl's juvenile oh, micro degeneration in the 60s. Just, just hy hyperbolically yeah. instantaneous, right? Uh, no, instantaneous. Like right there. It's done. Okay, so there's like no actual... Yeah, I can give you the... Yeah, so... Um, in the case study, well, I can send it to you. So the boy had two point. tubes stuck in his stomach. He was projectile vomiting since he was a what? child. Two tubes in his stomach? Okay. Yeah, so there was a physical showing of physical damage, um, which showed that he had this. And the boy could not eat proper food, because if you have gastrophoresis, it's a stomach interlining problem. Um, and it messes with your intestines, too. So as a baby, he was projectile vomiting, all these things. After he was prayed for, he instantly um, said that the tubes in his stomach were vibrating. And then within that week period, they took it out. But that night, he was also able to eat something that he could not eat ever. And when they checked it, they said there's no medical explanation for this. Even to the point where my buddy Caleb Jackson on his YouTube actually has a video of interviewing the doctor of the boy, which he was 17 at the time, named Chris Gunderson. And they confirmed it to be a miracle and confirmed that he was completely cured. Um, because he hasn't had a symptom since, um, or anything like that, and his gastrophoresis, severe gastrophoresis, is gone. So, I can give you that case. Um, but yeah, so if you look into miracles, there's like quite a few different examples of these things. Wait, so now, in, in a nutshell, reason... what happened, like, he had the, the gastrophoresis, whatever, and then... Yeah, yeah um... he was diagnosed with it when he was a baby. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then he was, what, prayed for, and... Yeah, he was prayed for, and then instantaneously the boy said that the tubes were rupture, were vibrating in his stomach. And he said, I don't need the tubes anymore. I'm healed. His parents were at awe, kind of confused. And then that night... Wait, he did was you send the study? Yeah. How could you control for that kind of thing in a study? Yeah. Uh, what do you mean? So usually you have like a placebo group, right, in a study, and then oh, you yeah. also have... The yeah, so they rule out like placebo effects or psychosomatic reasons in the case study. Um, How do they mean that? Yeah, because we have no other known case of gastrophoresis involving itself where it all the symptoms of severe gastrophoresis instantly heal, even if it's of something like psychosomatic. How does that rule out placebo? Uh, because if it's going to be placebo, it couldn't have been that because there's physical damage left over to show he actually had severe gastrophoresis. That's just restating what I'm asking for. How does that rule it out? Yeah, because normally when people have a placebo effect, it doesn't allow to something where there's like physical damage left over. Because placebo is going to be under the same category of something like psychosomatic reasons. I think he's asking you. To what are you talking about? Physical though. damage left over. Yeah, like he's asking you to generate the idea that a placebo. I don't like. Where, when did that come into play? Uh, what do you mean? You were just talking about some specific thing, and then you said there's no examples where there's placebo happening, but that's just like. No, that's not what, what I'm asking that. an argument for. No, I'm saying that we have no cases known where we see somebody with gastrophoresis, severe gastrophoresis, and it instantaneously goes away. Whether it's going to be something like going to remission, we have no cases of it doing that. Like we would have cases of like stage four, you know, cancer going to remission, but yeah, we may not have an actual reason why.
So that wouldn't be deemed a miracle. But is it on the left hand side? Yeah, I'll post this in the chat. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, just so confused. Like, how do you know that there's like no known cases of a uh, this dra- gastro thing going away with placebo? Yeah, I mean, if you want to look it up, go for it. Oh, so we're we're appealing to like internet, okay? No, not even like, that. My buddy it. Caleb Jackson works with multiple doctors, and they've went Wait, through. Wait, the study. Hang on, I, I'm I'm about done. I said it in the chat. Um, my buddy Caleb Jackson works with some doctors. I think one is from like Texas A and M University or something like that. Um, and so he's talked to them about it. They have not found anything in the relevant medical literature. And Caleb Jackson interviewed who was the doctor on the case for this boy, who has also dealt with other gastrophoresis cases and has researched it. And he couldn't find any known cases either. Same thing with something like an easier one instead of gastrophoresis to find this example would be like the case of a girl with juvenile macular degeneration. Um, because you can actually look up juvenile macular degeneration where they have decided between things like Scar- uh, Stargardt's disease and other forms. And there's not one example you can find where somebody has a progressive deterioration in the eyes and it randomly spontaneously goes back. People have um, macular degeneration. When you get older, your eyes start to wear out. But no, this girl was blind for like 17 or something. I think it was 17 or 20 something years. She had to learn how to read Braille. Um, the only thing she could see was light. Right. Um, and so she could not function or do anything like regarding of seeing. And her husband prayed for her one night and instantaneously it was healed. Um, I think it was within a couple weeks period. They went to the doctor. They reviewed her eyes and all that. And there was no explanation for it either. So wait, who, who was this? Yeah, I can send that case as well. OK. I'll send both of them. These aren't the best cases. These are just some that I'm more familiar with. Well, actually, I think that the gastrophoresis one is one of the best cases, honestly. Um, How do you respond have... to, like, human problems with miracles, though? Yeah, I already yeah, was talking I, I brought monkey that about that. Yeah. Oh, wait, well, how did he respond? Yeah, so if you're talking about Hume's criterion, it's not, like, an actual accepted criterion for multiple reasons. One, his criterion got broken through... Because if you realize, like, Hume actually had, like, a criterion that you could pass in order for a miracle to occur. Because he gave a couple different standards. Um, I can bring it up in my notes. Give me one second. So, so some of the idea is, whatever argument you present, it's going to be going along this line of experience, right? So it seems yeah, like but, we, can just mimic the, we can just mimic whatever you did with the experience kind of stuff, where it's like you rule out these other possibilities. Yeah, but if you want to say that, that it's experience, the greater... Miracle, and then we can just some, say that these laws of nature, yeah. since we've experienced those so much more, like, we're going to have greater evidence towards that. Well, no, actually, and, this is what I was bringing up to Monkey Boy. You have, like, the C.S. Lewis approach or Anthony Flew approach, which are both Humanian scholars that talk about, like, actually a miracle does not, like, violate the laws of nature. Um, it can just supersede it. And then you have the other what example... Uh, can I finish? What does supersede the laws can of nature? I, mean? I, like, yeah, I don't know what you're that, talking about. Sure, it means that if God created the laws of nature, he can put his hand right through it. Basically, would be the idea. God so, can put his hand... What, that, that's not really telling me much. Like, what is giving that this, like, mean? obscure analogy, and that's not, like, an, yeah, that's an like analysis really, of what yeah, that well, means. God if I'm going to talk to somebody, I'd like to talk to one person at a time, and then I can move on to the next person, and not both you yipping, at, like, at the same time. Is that fine? Because you asked me a question, then, like, you switch. So I'm trying to give you uh, Hume's criteria. What did I... No, I didn't switch. Look, I, I asked right, you the question dude, on superseding. Shut up. Stop. I'm giving you the criterion that Hume presented. If you don't want to listen to it, that's fine. Just quit. Just give me a second. <laughs> I'm not running now, dude. It's just, it's getting really annoying. Um, so Hume's criterion of miracles would be things like witnesses are never good enough to warrant their testimony over naturalistic theory. The majority of miracle claims in the past are false. The future contrary should be regarded as false. And that actually is circular reasoning. Um, three, the poor quality of witnesses, which he had because he had an ethocent- etho- ethnocentric bias. And four, competing miracle claims in different religions cancel each other out. The problem with Hume is that he said we should always believe the greater miracle. But he never really is going to, if you're going to say, well, that is just going to be the cop out and that's allowed. He set up a, a criterion on what would be the greater miracle. And that's what actually shot himself in the foot because he said get some no testimony is sufficient to establish a miracle unless the testimony be of such kind that it's false it would be more miraculous that the, than the facts which it endeavors to establish always reject the greater miracle right and we see this with blase pascal's niece uh margaret de perrier 
where you can look in this case and you can see she was in front. The queen deemed it a miracle. The queen's physicians were there. Um, people of even, I'll use Hume's words, in fact. Uh, let me find this real quick. Yeah. Hume says this. Where should we find such a number of circumstances agreeing to the corroboration of one fact? And what have we to oppose such a cloud of witnesses but the absolute impossibility or miraculous nature of the events which they relate? And surely in the eyes of all reason people will alone regard as a sufficient refutation, which makes no sense because it broke his entire criterion. You're done. Uh, do you mind giving turns a second chance? No. Not right now. Okay. Oh, yo, what's up, Sin? Mate, what's good? What was the argument with turns about? Um, th this person was trying to, like, argue miracles, and, um, like, that's pretty much it. They were arguing against miracles, it turns. Yeah, so all you can do with miracles is reason to the best explanation. Like, of a particular case. Of a miracle, what do you mean? And you start with, like, naturalism, and then from there, you, if the naturalistic theories don't uphold, and the supernatural hypothesis makes the best sense... Um, based off, you know, again, the examination of that data, inference of the best explanation. If you're willing to grant miracles as a possibility, but then that's what would follow. But if you hold it from like as a logical naturalist view, and you're just not able to, you know, get out of that cultural presupposition, well, then, yeah, I mean, you're just going to run to your same thing, and normally you're going to run to like something maybe like naturalism of the gaps or science of the gaps or something like that, which I don't think I'm doing here. For uh, a god of the gaps. Well, I mean, that's just gonna fall to like a. Look, that doesn't matter. Just what are you? What's your definition of miracle? Uh, an event with no uh, naturalistic explanation built around religious significance. Built around religious significance, you said. Yeah. Okay, so just some event which people think is religious, which you don't have a natural explanation for. Uh, say that again. Some event which people think is religious that you don't have a naturalistic explanation for. Uh, it would be. It would be like. There's no naturalistic explanation for it, and it's built around, yeah, like, the religious significance, so something like a medical miracle or something like that, yeah. So is that a yes to my question? Uh, yeah, it just seems like you reworded what I said, unless you have a different meaning to it. Well, as long as you understand that that is an accurate portrayal of your view, that's just going to be really trivial, right? There's going to be plenty of things that people think are, think are religious, uh, divine, things that happen that we didn't have a natural explanation for. It turned out to have one afterwards, which gives us inductive support against the case of them being, um, them being supernatural in the first place. So just on your account of what a miracle is, you don't need any kind of supernatural explanation for them. Sorry, repeat that. On your account of what a miracle is, you don't need any kind of supernatural explanation for them. Hang on, you're really low. Say it one more time. Let me turn it up a little bit. On your account of what a miracle is, you don't need any supernatural explanation for them. Yeah, yeah, I would. No, you wouldn't. I just gave you the argument as to why you wouldn't. No, that doesn't follow in the case of what I've been bringing up. Yeah, why does that argument not follow? No, I said it doesn't matter, like, what you're saying. Like, if you want to say no, somebody you said it doesn't is... follow. Can you stop? Stop what? Stop over talking me. <laughs> you just rambled. <laughs> is that serious? This is what happens with turns. Just like lied about what he said and then like turns called him out or something. So he's muted now? No, he's muted because he wouldn't shut up. Okay, so that is what happened. I got it. Um, all right, so look, just you understand that on your account of what a miracle is, you wouldn't need any supernatural explanation to say something like people think this is religious and it's the case we have no, no current natural explanation, but some no. other naturalist explanation could account for it, right? You no, know, rel religiosity is going to mean like that. That is going to be like the best inference to the explanation, like that you have. So there's yeah, no natural the cause or something like, um, let's say, like the case that I gave up, like juvenile macular degeneration or something like that. So the religious significance is going to indeed make it a miracle. Yeah, I was going to beg the question. How so? You're just asserting the argument as one of the premises. The conclusion is the premise. It's like the most trivial example of begging the question. No, I'm not begging the question. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. <laughs> I just still look. I don't know if you're just gonna say no, uh -uh. no, I'm not. Over and over again, I think that's a counter argument or something. Look, if your argument yeah, I mean, is, you if I give you a list, yeah, you, you look, you're over talking, and you're gonna start like complaining about it. So just listen to the argument and try to hear your way through it. The argument's really simple. Your definition of what a miracle is is just people think it's religious, and there is not a natural explanation for it. There is not, right? Not that there is none possible, just that there currently isn't one, right? If that's all you mean by a miracle then some future naturalistic explanation could certainly account for that. There are plenty of, like, random astrono uh, astrological, or sorry, um, astronomical facts, right, that people didn't know the explanation for and had some religious explanation for instead, like the creation of the Earth, for example. Right, and then later on, it turned out there were good naturalistic explanations for it. You would have said the creation of the Earth is a miracle, right, that fits your definition of a miracle, and yet there's a naturalistic explanation for the creation of the Earth.
Yeah, no, that doesn't follow because I'm saying that again, they can be like falsified based off the criterion. And if we're using religious, it's going to be something of relating to believe in a religion, but it's not going to have a naturalistic cause. And the inference of the best explanation is going to be that of the miraculous. Which is what was the, the look? You're saying it doesn't follow. What was the invalid inference applied? No, I'm saying what you're saying about my argument does not follow. Yeah, you're, you're saying, saying it doesn't follow. I know that. I asked you what's the invalid inference. Yeah, I mean, I don't deal with, like, the whole epistemological, like, your philosophical stance. I don't deal with that. Was it, that wasn't epistemological? That was a logical question? Just normal logic? Was the invalid inference? Yeah, uh, I don't deal with, like, philosophy of nature. So. Like okay, that. does it need, does it require philosophy of nature? It's just logic, what? <laughs> I'm, I'm about to debunk. I'm about to debunk Christianity, okay? You guys Sarah, are... Sarah wait. You gotta wait, man. Yeah. yeah. Look, so... Yep, so a, is your, <laughs> can I ask a question? Is your argument that I would hold the view because some religious people believed in something that was miraculous and later it was found out not to be miraculous, therefore it's like not miraculous? It, my argument has argument? nothing to do with what views you would hold. My argument is just about given the statement that you've made, it's the case that these other things follow from it. Uh, no, because it's a criterion that could be falsified. Well, sorry, which criterion? Yeah, I'm saying that if we find out later for a natural cause for it, then it's not miraculous. It would be miraculous under your definition. No, it wouldn't. Yeah. No, it's not. Do you, did you forget what your definition, definition was? What did yeah, you I know my what definition. What did you, do you forget what it was? No, I remember what my definition was. Yeah, you said if there is not a naturalistic explanation. Yeah, if there's no current naturalistic explanation, mm -hmm. and it's built around religious significance, and that's the yep. better hypothesis over any naturalistic theory, then that's what we uphold to until further evidence. That was your definition of a miracle. Correct. Yes. So, it would be a miracle if it's the case there's not a current naturalistic explanation. Even if, in the future, there's yeah, a better naturalistic there's, explanation. If, then it would not be a miracle. <laughs> that's a contradiction. What? No, it's not. It's a it's criteria. It's a contradiction. Yeah, it's a criteria, and some things fit the, fit the criteria. Andrew is asserting they both do and don't fit the criteria. They have all the traits that are necessary conditions of the criteria, and you're saying they're not part of that criteria. They're not part of the No, category. because if it's falsified in the supernatural hypothesis does not overreign that of a naturalistic example or that hypothesis, then the naturalistic hypothesis overrules it. So then it's not yeah, miraculous. Yeah, I've got a straw man, bro. Look, what's the? I'm, I'm sure. I'm not even sure who Jay is claiming a straw man. It, you really are. I don't think you understand. What my was argument. the? What was the view that you espoused that I? And then what's the straw man version I gave? You literally just said, "Is this guy dumb or something?" What's that? Was well, it a straw man? What are you what? saying that That's for? Not... <laughs> is this guy retarded? Look, what, this, do you, what do you think a straw this man? This Jay guy is? definitely is dumb. This Jay guy definitely is dumb. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, when a straw, you're not a my argument is... to its whole. I mean, like I said, that depending on which hypothesis overreigns, and we start with naturalism. If there's no naturalistic explanation, there's religious significance involved into the event that's caused, which is going to be something like either you turn it up as like a natural phenomena, um, if it's not going to be religious in nature, and we don't have an explanation for it, um, which it actually would be something like stage four cancer or those types of things. But if there's religiosity within the event itself, and there's no naturalistic cause, like if we're talking about like a prayer um, to somebody, and it instantaneously heals, we have no example of this going to remission or anything like that outside of religious context, and it's best to suit it to say it's a miracle until further evaluation. Look, this is the world's dumbest argument. Just try to think through this very, very simply. So, back when it was the case that we had no natural explanation for the creation of the Earth, and people thought the creation of the Earth was due to God, at that, yeah, point, in time, that, it, it, at that point in time, you wouldn't, you're saying back in that point in time, you wouldn't call it miraculous? I wouldn't call that, like, miraculous, no. At that point in time, you wouldn't call it miraculous? Uh, that would not fit under my criterion for being miraculous, no. Okay, so what was your criterion for being miraculous? Yeah, so again, I will say that there's no naturalistic explanation. Check. For something like a medical miracle, right? No, don't go and to examples. the only cause... No, it, I'm going to go we're to... Going to go to, to we're doing example. definitions right now. I'm going to give an example. You're not <laughs> examples are how you language. make definitions. If this you're is going so to dumb. continue talking, me, if you're going to continue over talking me, I'm just going to mute you too until I'm done. <laughs> like... Be charitable. Dog, so, I'm doing, like, direct charity right now. You're actually not. That's why you're getting muted just for a second. So, again, I said, like, it has to be an event where the supernatural means would be inference of the best explanation, like somebody praying instantaneously for, like, a healing. That would be the best explanation. Now, later on, if in the case of, like, juvenile macular degeneration or something, we found that it was a naturalistic cause, then we can overrule and say that that was not, in fact, a miracle. Pretty, pretty simple. It's not that hard to figure out. That was the world's dumbest argument. I'm being so charitable that right now I'm teaching a special ed class. So just listen to the argument one more time. All right. Yeah, no, you're not going to be doing that.
if you're not going to be charitable as I'm trying to be charitable with you, um, we're, we're not, we're not doing that here. Unmute since Synth won't use any more insults. No. He already used multiple of them. I can tell by yeah, his tone. I'm, I'm saying yeah, you, you she, she, she won't, yeah, she won't continue to use them. No. That's a, that's not a she. Sorry, what do you, what do you think she means? That's a she? Yeah, it's a, it's a she, yeah. Unfortunate. Sorry, I don't know. What, what do you What do you think you mean by unfortunate? Like, wait, is what, is unfortunate? Like, I don't know. Like, why? You, <laughs> what do you mean? This is un, Can you like elaborate on what you mean by that? I'm like so confused. I'm Bill no Walter. answer. No answer. All right. Okay. So, um, yeah. What? Sorry, I wasn't even paying attention. Um, what was the case you were trying to generate for why um miracles? Exist when you're talking to synth? Uh, yeah, I just said that if the supernatural explanation um, overran something like a medical miracle, right, like a, like a medical miracle claim, um, if there's no naturalistic explanation, it's built around religious significance, which is going to be something like intercessory prayer or something like that, then that's the best thing we can follow on at that moment okay. until later on we can hold, you know, if there's evidence to the contrary then we can say that it's going to be that of a naturalistic cause. I don't I don't see how, well that's just going to lead like to an underdetermination issue, right? Which is the idea that like if you're saying that it's going to be like conducive or it's going to be like some um it's going to be a, what, what's the term? auxiliary for the idea of like this specific like theology or any like religion. I don't understand how that's not going to be like motivation for like unicorns. Right, because if we're just going to build into the hypothesis of a unicorn, uh, if they're they it, like, I mean, I'm a henotheist, so I don't discredit any like other gods or goddesses operating in the world. I don't know. What so this isn't like a, is. yeah, what, yeah. What so it? it's somebody that doesn't like discredit like other gods or goddesses in the world, and religion is going to be like relating or to believing in a religion. So it's going to be something that is going, you know, well, to the, have the a issue. Is I don't, I don't know yeah. if a unicorn qualifies as like a god. I don't know what your like touchstone. What a god um, I mean, can you like give me like a case of somebody saying that they were healed and that's the best explanation and they're saying there was a unicorn in the bright blue sky or something well, that was invisible? Well, listen, the, the issue is in like, <laughs> I don't even know why you like why you want an exemplification of an instance in which they like appeal to a unicorn, right? Because it's not going to be the case that the dogsastic attitude of the agent that's actually manifesting this like um, liberation of illness is going to be conducive to the idea that it's that thing, right? It could be the case that Allah in like his mercy is healing like some other like a Christian or that there's like some like non-religious God who just answers prayers right yeah but like that would be really unlikely though because Wait. if it's in a Christian worldview and there's like a Christian yeah I'm about to say because it would go against anything like of Allah so if people want to glorify in Allah as saying he's the true God and that he wants people to follow him then you would expect that the miracle would be under the terms of saying Allah healed me or did this instead of that of like um, the Christian God did this, right? Know. So it was Yahweh. So like that would just be a weird thing to do, and it would go like contrary to like Islam itself. Wait, so if the idea that okay, so evidence is just gonna be like novel, testable prediction, or we can even exclude like testability, right? So if the idea is that a novel prediction is gonna be conducive to the idea that this is gonna be like well, no, it wouldn't be a novel prediction. It's not gonna be a novel prediction. So what's your concern? no, it wouldn't. What's your theory of evidence? Uh, it's gonna be something like a Bayesian comportance of evidence. So wait, did your definition of evidence just like deploy the term evidence in its own use? Like what I'm asking for is- Well, no, your... you asked me like, what, what, what's my form of evidence? So no, hold no, on, what that's I'm what I'm asking, saying. What I'm asking is what's your evidence theory? Like what do you think theory, like evidence is? What do I think evidence is? Yeah. What do you mean? What are you? Okay, so if I, if I said, I don't, I don't know what's unclear about this. So if you're um, saying that- The facts, information, documents, I give a reason to believe that something is true. But you raise it from one hypothesis to another. Oh, so, so you, like so you it's can have, be a symmetry breaker, right? Yeah, I, I. What do you mean by symmetry breaker? That if two hypotheses have, it's it's going to be something yeah, it, that we, motivates one hypothesis over the other, right? It, it breaks the symmetry. Well, there's evidence for both hypotheses, and then it seems I which one. I know what you mean. Yeah, so you can have evidence that you're pointing to, like this could be naturalistic. And then you get have evidence that this is going to be like supernaturalistic, and then you weigh which one is better based off the relevant data that we have, right? Yeah, and what is that data? Uh, it depends on the particular case we're looking. I don't. So, like, 
I'm not understanding. Are you saying that all evidence is is some appeal to data given like, because I'm not understanding what work this like expression of it's a lot doing. Like I have this thought that I'm praying to Allah and that therefore it's going to be uh, cooperating with that notion that it is therefore Allah because the sickness was e like healed um, on this like miracle account, right? Like, is it, do you take it that it's possible that um, one gets in, uh, like some prayer answered and they're like, thinking they're talking to Allah, but it's like not a God It's or it's not the God they believe in? Is that not possible? Uh, it, it, it's possible, but it's not probable. Okay, so what motivates the scenario? What would be predicted? Like, What's going to be evidence that it's not the case that it's them praying in a different yeah, God? I already answer? gave the example. Yeah, yeah. I already gave like the reason because if, like, if you're talking about how well, like, listen, Allah it, operates, it, it wouldn't make sense. Wait, what are you, what are you talking about? No. Listen. An example is going to be underdetermined, right? What I'm asking for is an analysis, not not an example. Yeah, so I like I'm using your example that you made of like a law healing somebody in like a Christian worldview, and it could really be a law instead of like the Christian God. So I'm using that example, and I'm saying the analysis wouldn't make sense because when we look at how a law is portrayed in the religion of Islam, it wouldn't make sense for him to do so because he wants people to come to a law. So why would he say that? Well, it's not a law. It's actually the Christian God. No, what it I'm saying just, is that there's going to be a false religion, right? And they're praying to Allah and another God that which exists has mercy and answers prayers that are not directly towards him, right? And that's going to be a logical possibility. So I'm asking, what's going to be the the bar, the evidential bar that you're raising for which is going to be more conducive to that hypothesis over well, we, the one that I raised? Well, we'd have to examine this like God is, right? That's, and that's, how does he operate? That's, I don't understand how that's going to be pertinent, right? I'm asking, what's going to be motivating? It, it would though. Yeah, to uh, to find the motivations of why the God would do so, you have to know something about the God. What do you? At least what people believe he upholds to, or something like that, to see if this would make sense in that worldview to do so. And um, so I don't understand. Do you just like not engage with like cerebus paribus like uh, analogies or like uh, hypotheticals? Like I don't understand. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't dive into like philosophy one hundred and one. Like I, I just say I don't do that. Uh, yeah, I can tell. But listen, what I'm trying to ask is, given that we have some alternate competing model of a god or a deity or some mythical creature what is going to be the motivation that one prays to allah and doesn't have their prayer answered over some other creature answering while they're praying in the name of allah right because it's going to be possible right yeah yeah so it's going to be possible that one prays to allah and has a different creature or entity answer that prayer right i'm, I'm asking what's going to be motivating for the hypothesis it is allah being prayed to over there being an alternate entity answering the prayer in the name of Allah. Well, that would be like the religious significance backing, like the event. Yeah, let's just say there's no religious parameters around the entity, right? Let's say it's a unicorn. Okay. Do you have any like Do you have any evidence of this unicorn existing, or like any reasons of people following what, the unicorn? What are you talking about? What I'm asking for is what's I mean, going to be because the because I'm going to take like. I'm going to take like evidence like to that. So if we're you're saying that it's going to be like a law doing this to like a, a Christian miracle claim or something, then I need to know like I'd have to examine the evidence of who a law is. Um, has a law been known to do this um, in other religions? Uh, does it make sense for him to do so, or does he hold more of a strict view of like, look, Wait, I'm what, doing things um, that only glorifies a law? I don't. I don't think so, you're tracking. What do you think I'm asking you? Like, what do you think is the scenario that I'm put, up putting? That I'm asking you to present the symmetry breaker for, or an analysis of what a symmetry breaker between the juxtaposed hypotheses would be, um, would look like. What do you think? I'm, what do you think that scenario yeah, is? I, I don't. I, I really don't know what you just said. Yeah. So I'm putting forth a state of affairs in which I'm asking, juxtaposing these alternative models of hypotheses. Use use smaller words. Okay. There's two hypotheses. Yes. I'm asking what makes one more likely, and I'm giving mm -hmm. you. The, the scenario in which one of the, the the one that's thought to be prayed to is Allah, but it's actually answered by a unicorn. What's evidence? Yeah, towards uh, we it? have evidence of like Allah miracles. We have no evidence of this unicorn. I don't under wh what I'm asking. I don't. Know, what are you talking about? I'm literally giving you my answer. What I'm, <laughs> you're like building in the motivations against it is evidence, and I'm asking what's the evidence. What's, what yeah, is the yeah, criterion I've, of evidence in which you can actually, um, like, restrict the range of compatible hypotheses? You're using big words again. Yeah, so the, uh, the way we understand evidence is when we can have more well, motivation for our you hypothesis. understand evidence this way. Okay, so then, I, then that's going to fall back once again to what is your understanding of evidence? 
Yeah, I already said it's going to be like facts, information, documents, things that give a reason to believe that something is true. A reason to believe, and you take a, a reason to be like an inference, right? Uh, it would give, yeah, that would be an inference to believe that something is true. Sure. Okay, great. So, yeah, so the, if we have a hypothesis of that overweighs another hypothesis, then that is just going to be more reasons and it's going to be more likely to be true. Yeah, so, until yeah, further so, so you would take it only a, a sound inference is going to be the reason, not not a valid inference, right? A sound inference. No, I mean, I, I think it's valid under like an evidentialist. Like, no, what, I'm, ask, what I mean, I'm asking is... All you're is, doing is you're going based off like the relevant data that you have. No, no, no. What, what I'm asking is you would believe reason to believe one hypothesis over the other is uh, an inference that's sound, not solely valid. Yeah, until further evidence shows otherwise. Okay, so it's a sound inference, right? Uh, I, I guess. I... Yeah, you understand a sound inference builds in evidence, right? Evidence is built into a sound inference. You like just you're so oblivious as to like the terms you're even invoking. No, I'm not. Yeah, you said you said that reasons are going to be what is considered evidence. Be very careful. And a sound here. inference is considered be reason. Be very careful here. And evidence is going to be that which allows for a valid inference to constitute and soundness. And you wouldn't stop. You're retarded, yo. Perfect. <laughs>